Welcome back everybody and today we're going to be looking over a few things that really relate specifically to people getting into the hobby for the first time. I'm only relatively new myself and up until recently had absolutely no idea that Games Workshop had a free model of the month program uh, which obviously doesn't cost you a thing to do, you just have to lob up in store. Uh, so I only just found out about this and so I called up the local store and spoke to a wonderful guy called Matt who said come on in and we'll get you sorted and uh, so I lobbed up and the way they function is that uh, you come into the store and they will make you physically take the model off the sprue uh, because what they don't want is you just adding to your pile of shame taking it away and not doing anything with it so they give you the clippers and say knock yourself out take it apart stick it in a box and then you're good to go so that's exactly what I did uh, and obviously all they request is that you just uh, show a bit of patronage to their store which I think is only a fair and reasonable expectation so we got the little plastic guy home and in this instance here he is a jackal the jackals are a group of humans that uh, belong to the world eaters uh, they're kind of like the strongest and toughest of the humanoids that run around and serve the forces of chaos these guys all seem to be uh, touting chain axes for the most part and they all come with chemical tanks on their backs that inject some questionable sort of substances into them to give them inhuman levels of stupidity apparently and uh, it should be rather interesting getting this little guy painted up and first things first was actually just taking all of the flashing bits and pieces off the plastic that remained and any mold lines such as those that might be like on his head or wherever else is going to be screamingly obvious and uh, there's not a great deal of parts it's just the one character and a small base uh, that you have to work with and so diligently went ahead and got him all prepared this is my first experience of actually working with a model that doesn't come in a beginner set and all of those generally have pins that you push into little sockets to clip things together so they're all glueless this is the first time that actually really need glue to assemble the model and it has funny little sockets and uh, little sections where the hands kind of half are connected to arms and things like that so we uh, went through progressively and it's pretty self-explanatory even though there is instructions and lets you know how to put it together but it was pretty straightforward one thing that would have been handy I guess having uh, been doing this hobby for three months approximately and I still haven't actually painted a model it would have been maybe good to do this in pieces and not assemble the whole thing together although it's nice just to get the thing completed but uh, trying to paint the thing is a little bit easier without some of the dangly bits like the chains on his arms and everything getting in the way uh, but uh, that's just one of those things obviously if you're painting an army you're not going to be so concerned about trying to get all the detail you just want to slap paint on it and that's going to do the job for you but uh, yeah if you're trying to be a little bit more precise uh, then I guess it would be easier to do it in pieces and then assemble after the fact uh, but these are the things you learn and I've been pretty much gun shy uh, and steering away from painting because I didn't want to make a mess of the damn thing so I've miraculously avoided it this long but uh, I finally had to bite the bullet and Mr. Freebie here was the perfect choice uh, as I didn't have any skin in the game so to speak wasn't too concerned and uh, I really need to experiment haven't used these paints before either have no idea what the colors are like how they work together and I've got both the air paints which are just your basic acrylics and also the speed paints which are kind of like a contrast paint a wash and uh, I just have to learn how they work and unfortunately this little guy became the guinea pig so first things first was to put a primer on and we just used Sonal Res Black uh, through an airbrush to coat him 
and then I did a little bit of detailing on the weapons with some metal primer just to make it look a bit silvery and uh, finally then after looking at the destructions from Citadel on how to paint this guy uh, they generally do most of their contrast paints over a grey base I then coated most of the model in a sort of a grey primer uh, to get a sort of an initial sort of surface on which to work to begin with, I tried combining bleached bone and wielding flesh to army paint colours together. One was a bit too orange and the other probably a little bit too pale. Uh, great for dead guys, but this guy's apparently alive. And so I wanted to get a little bit more of warmth into the colour, so we tried mixing that and applying it uh, to the little human uh, to get an idea of what he looks like. And uh, came out sort of okay, a little bit pale but at least as a base, as a first coat, uh, and then did another coat on top of that just to uh, sort of add a little bit more, uh, I guess, density in the color. And uh, then we decided, okay, well, look, we've got a reasonable backing for that. Let's go on and do the base of the model. And in that instance there, we decided again to play around with some colors. This time, the speed paints, which are the contrast paints, and chose two different grays, sort of a, a lighter and a darker gray, thinking oh, I'll do the top half of the pants or that that is exposed, trying to get that sort of zenithal type thing going on over the gray. So a lighter gray and a darker gray in the shadowed areas. So we whacked them on the model to see what that sort of looked like. Not that much differentiation clearly over a gray base. Uh, but nonetheless at least it was a foundation again just reiterating this is the land of experimentation so i'm p probably doing everything wrong but uh, uh you got to start somewhere and uh, obviously next thing after i'm doing his pants should be his boots and so we just chose a rawhide brown so a basic acrylic uh, to apply to the sort of the spats uh, around his shoes i was just going to paint his shoes black so use the brown there as a base and uh, it does go on and it is a little bit transparent you can't see through it also there's a few other leather things that he has he, uh, there's a leather belt and also the holster for the pistol and uh, so they all got the same treatment uh, and it is a little bit sort of thin I didn't water it down humanly lots it was just on a wet palette but it appears to sort of have a bit of a translucency to it so I'm guessing there will be several coats of that involved as well uh, to get the job done uh, I then decided oh let's play with some red and color in the cylinders on his back and that seemed like a reasonable thing to do uh, upon looking at the site and some more information on it uh, they have been painted and it's like it's actually a glass cylinder and you can partially see through it and the fluid that's inside is red obviously blood red duh, and uh, th they have different levels so you can actually do it that way I thought it was actually just a canister so I painted the whole thing solid red no big deal uh, looked okay anyway and uh, the tops were sort of a brassy sort of color. So to try and get a sort of a brassy gold look, I grabbed the Sand Golem Speed Paint uh, because that over a silver kind of turns into a gold type finish and applied that to the tops and the bottoms of the canisters. Also the bases of, or the sort of the uh, hilts of the weapons. And uh, unbeknownst to me, something kind of weird and wacky happened and it looked great when it was wet and then when it dried out unfortunately it appeared to like uh, go all dusty uh, kind of like an oxidation and instead of having a sort of a brassy finish it ended up looking all rusty i don't know what happened i'm thinking there was contamination in the water possibly from a brush cleaner or something that has activated with the paint and caused it to separate it also happened again when I decided to try and detail the pants using black and the black paint also went sort of dusty grey uh, so there clearly was something going on it was at that point I decided oh better change the water just in case and I haven't had any issues bef uh, since but that was def definitely something to look out for and never having used these paints I had no idea what was going on uh, but that was not what I was expecting to happen. 
Uh, Jack Hiller was looking a little bit insipid, so I decided to uh, try and darken him up a little and grabbed uh, Pallid Bone Speed Paint uh, to try and increase some of the contrast on the body and uh, applied that liberally to uh, his torso and uh, also grabbed some Magnolia Brown to detail the strapping uh, on his uh, chest and his head uh, to differentiate that and then there's a little skull dangling from his belt so we used a bit of bleach bone to color that up uh, to differentiate that and uh, when it all dried he didn't look too bad uh, also sort of did a little bit of red detailing just for the fun of it uh, but ultimately thought mm, you know what he's still a little bit wishy-washy I think we can do better and uh, then resorted to crusader skin and applied that color which definitely richened him up a fair bit and uh, gave him actually more of a pinky sort of hue but uh, looked a lot better in the end so I was quite happy with the finish that, that created we also tried putting in his eyes they looked a little bit freaky initially uh, but once the contrast paint went over the white eyeballs it actually looked a lot better I did some final detailing just on some of the raised parts of the skin with a lighter color just to emphasize those elements and also some of the folds in the trousers uh, but other than that, that was pretty much it. Then it was on to just doing the basing, which was a simple add some PVA glue, jag it into some sand and gravel, get a base, and then uh, paint it up using pallid bone as a sort of a foundation. And then over the top of that, laying down some bleach bone using a dry brushing technique just to highlight the edges. And then finally using the army painter sand golem speed paint just to sort of dot on a few points to uh, add a bit of color then added a few bits of the army painter uh, sort of grass tufts to finish that and then paint the rim in black and voila we have finally after three odd months of playing with this hobby actually finished and completed a model so there he is one jackal and uh, that's all I've got but uh, at least I can now move on to Necrons and Space Marines and hopefully do them and have a bit of fun so yippee hooray Miami Beach I've finally done one and thanks for watching and perhaps see you in the next one